Welcome back once again everyone, I'm Kplays Games, this is EVE Online, and today we're going to be doing the Exploration Career Agent. So far with this brand new character, we've done the Enforcer Career Agent and the Industrialist Producer Career Agent. That's blowing things up and building things, respectively. So let's double click on the Exploration Agent and see what they want us to do. Okay, once we're undocked, open the probe scanner and select the work to button for a location named Anomaly Training Site. Okay, that is correct information. This never used to be correct, so they have indeed fixed this. We are not going to be doing this in our big slow hauling ship. We're going to be doing it in our normal Merlin combat ship. So as the agent said, we need to open the probe scanner. Now, unfortunately, we have not been provided with a pointer for this. Uh, it's down here in scanners and probe scanner window that opens this hot mess here if you go up to the top and change this to floating it suddenly becomes more manageable and if we come here to the probe scanner panel and we select open in separate window this makes things much easier this map we do not need right now so we can close this map section We'll make this section a little bit larger so we can see what we're doing. And he told us to f click on Warp 2 on an anomaly training site. Now, unfortunately, it's been filtered out. We need to filter in anomalies. So click mouse over this filter. And what we need to click on are anomalies. That's what we're trying to find. So we'll just deselect everything else. Okay, we have some anomalies. And we'll just change the size of this bar so we can read what their names are. This is all default settings. I started a brand new client. So everything you're seeing is default. Anything that is wrong is not my fault. It is the developer's fault for having crap defaults. And what we were told to do is click on warp to on one of these anomaly training sites. Or you can right click and warp to zero meters. Warp drive active. That's how you find these sites in space. It's as simple as that. If we click this little map icon, this brings up the map. And as we select these icons, see, this is the one we're working to. This is where we are. Indeed, we are now at this green ping. Okay, so we have to approach this container. Which looks like it's on the other side of... An annoyingly placed bit of scenery. Well, that's not very good, is it? Had to do some fancy flying there to stop from bouncing off some scenery. You see, these sites constantly respawn because they're visited all the time and then they constantly respawn. This Gurustas Refuge is actually what I would call a bona fide proper combat site. That is not a tutorial site, the Refuge, so... Do be careful. Proof of discovery, anomalies. This is what we need. We'll do this. And that's it. That's all we had to do for that mission. Back to the station. Unfortunately, the station is on the other side of this giant rock. So we'll just stop the ship and then double click and fly around the stupid scenery with the giant hitbox. Ah, there's the station right there. Now we can warp to it. Drive I know they wanted to make this look interesting, but putting giant rocks with huge hitboxes in them is just annoying. So, so pretty much as soon as we left that site it would have despawned and a new one had respawned. There are always, uh, always three of these anomaly training sites. This being a rookie system, of course there will be lots of people running this exact mission, so they need to respawn these Don't sites all the time. Requested. Okay, double click on the agent, complete the mission. We have the thing he wanted us to find. Next up is two of five, and we're being taken through a cosmic signature identification and recognition course. Let's see if they fix this. This is one of the very broken missions, and we're being given a heron when we accept the mission. And that is a good thing, because herons are specialist scanning ships. So we'll double click to assemble it, and then double click again to make it active. This is what herons look like. Very weird. And take a quick look at the fitting screen. 
five medium slots because scanning upgrades are usually medium slots, two low slots, and three high slots, two of which can be missile and two of which can be turret. Not that you'll ever be fighting in a heron normally. Normally, you put a scan probe launcher in here and then um, that's pretty much it. If we look at the info on the traits tab, it gets bonuses to scanner probe strength and that's something we're going to be using very, very soon. And relic and data analyzer virus strength. Again, these are things we are going to be using very, very soon. So this is the perfect ship for this mission arc. So let's just undock. And this time we're actually being given a mission site to warp to. Drive active. And I think we're finished with the probe scanner just now, so we can just close it. I did change the overview settings slightly because I didn't like the way that players were being highlighted. To do that, you go to the top right. Up here, you open overview settings, you click on appearance, and I just deselected all these colors that were on um, neutral players. I don't care about neutral players. Players who are bad or good are ones I care about. If players are just neutral, I don't want to have them marked. So I just deselected them. Simple as that. Anyway, here is our agent, and they said, activate the acceleration gate. Well, thank you for that. Warp drive active. Okay, now we're in what they call a supply area, and we are supposed to fly to this box, open it, and take out everything that's in it. Um, this shows the age of this mission arc. This was long before we had something like the Redemption Queue, where the game could just give you items directly. This is how, this is how old and out of date the career agents are, and actually spawned gifts for us in this box, and we have to physically go and pick them up from this mission site. That is something that could easily be addressed. This is all the stuff we need. A launcher which launches probe scanners, and two analyzers which let us open locked boxes. So take all of that, go through the acceleration gate. And allegedly, the sites we're going to see now are examples of scanning sites. I'm not sure why, because we're told to scan down these sites and visit them in the next couple of missions anyway. So if we're going to be coming to these sites in the next mission, why do we need to be shown an example of what they look like in this mission? I don't know. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. This apparently is what data sites look like, and it's fairly close. These little spinning things here are what are the locked boxes. You get close enough to them and then you use your hacking tool, do a little mini game, and then it opens and you take the loot out. It's very, very simple, is hacking and scanning. Like I said, I'm not sure why this mission exists. They could just give you this stuff and then send you off to find actual examples of these sites. Apparently this is what a relic site looks like, with all this ancient debris scattered around the place. Now you will notice that um, none of the debris is actually marked on the overview, and it really should be, so you can identify things, but again, showing its age... I mean, that right there should be some sort of structure that you could click on and get some information out, but um, nope. Not for us, apparently. If we use the Alt Z, it should turn on all in space icons, but unfortunately, nothing here has an icon, so nothing's been shown. So, yeah, wow, apparently, this is what a relic site looks like, even though it's not. Let's just get through the gate. And allegedly, we're going to be shown what a gas site may look like. The gas sites are extremely rare in high security space. I mean, extremely rare. And even when you find them, they're absolute garbage. And the gas inside them is not worth harvesting. Most gas is done in 
zero security space or low security space or wormholes, things like that. So, um, yeah, that's that's that mission. It makes you come out here, pick up some stuff out of a can, and then show you examples of sites it's going to make you go and find in the next mission anyway. So, a complete waste of everyone's time. Just give us this in the redeem queue and get on with the next mission. That's my advice as to how to fix this agent. Alright, we made it. Let's complete this terrible mission with the agent and request the next one and claim more reward bundles and we'll just redeem all this stuff and apparently we have something else as well an industrialist expert system which is going to give us even more skills we don't already have for another three days so we'll just redeem that as well why not we'll take all the free skills i believe that's the three expert systems we have now yes all these skills have been granted to us for a period of a couple of days just lets you get your feet wet in various different activities and if you like that activity you can then permanently train these skills to keep them Okay, now he's telling us to fit all the stuff we just got onto a ship. So we'll drag it into the item hangar just now. And we're going to have to use a probe scanner to find a data site. And it does point us towards the help section of the agency, which has some videos about this. They're not all that great, but you can watch them if you want. How to load, how to launch probes... Does it have the Scanning Basics one? Explorer? Yep, Scanning Basics. That's kind of the video you want. But I'm not going to make you sit through a four and a half minute lecture. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So let's accept. First thing we're going to have to do is to fit all this stuff on the ship. So probe launcher goes in the high slot. Probes go in the probe launcher. Relic and data analyzers go in mid slots along with a afterburner to move us a bit faster. And to be honest, that's all we're going to need. So we'll just click on dock. And I'll show you how to scan. First thing I want to do when I'm scanning is to not hang around outside the busy station. Because when we're scanning, we're not really paying attention to anything else that's going on. And unscrupulous players may use that as an opportunity to attack you. So I'm just going to right click in space, select a, a random planet. We'll just go to this one. We'll just warp to it. Warp to it within 100 kilometers. Just so we're somewhere relatively quiet so we can scan in peace. Okay, after a very short warp, we're close to a planet, no players around us, it's great. So, how do we scan? Remember, we're trying to find a data site, because we need the proof of discovery data. So again, we open the probe scanner window, and we open the map, because we're going to need that this time. And now, in the filter, we need to deselect anomalies and select cosmic signatures, because what we are trying to find is a cosmic signature. As we see, these cosmic signatures are currently big red globes. And we need to turn these into green dots that we can then warp to. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we need to do is to launch some probes. Probes are used in groups of eight. We have eight loaded, so it will launch all eight of them. Using this map is very easy. You just click and drag. Or you can use this to do vertical and horizontal views. Start top down. Just left click on something to center the map on that thing. These are the various formations that our probes can use. Usually you just use pinpoint for pretty much everything and as soon as we click this our probes are in space and they're actually in space right next to our ship and when we send them away they will warp away and scan things. These are our eight probes in a very tight cluster with overlapping blue bubbles. And what we want to do is to get these red bubbles in the middle of this big overlapping bit in the middle. That's a TLDR, so let's do that. We'll just click and drag this box to move the probe formation. Now it's not quite in the middle because we could do with this central part being slightly larger. So what we'll do, we'll come down here to probe size and use the scroll wheel just to make it a little bit larger. Okay, so now if we just click and drag these arrows, that's all of that red bubble pretty much in the middle of our overlapping blue bubbles. And then we'll click Analyze. And the probes will vanish off the screen as they warp away. Off they go. And they will travel over here. This is their scanning progress. Wow. Okay. 
<laughs> that was very easy. We have found, with the first pass on scan size 8 astronomical units, we've made this have an icon that says warp 2. Now that was extremely easy to find. Let's just put the probes in the middle of the system, put them up to 16 AU so they cover the entire system and scan again. I didn't really want to find that on the first scan pass, but we did. Scanning is not usually this easy. That's more like it. See, we've got this green one we can warp to, this orange one, and this yellow one, and two reds. The reds are now red dots, so to make them easier to find, you can reposition your probes over them and then move down. I would suggest moving down one radius at a time and then click scan again. And the chime means that we have identified something at 100% and that was just relic training site, but we're still on the hunt for this particular red dot and it's moved a little bit because that's what they do as you scan you find the more precise location, so it moves. And then we want to go down one more radius, make sure we're nicely centered, scan again. Now this being so, so difficult to find, it makes you think it's an actual real one. As you see, the training sites are actually too easy to find. We found like all of them already. Okay, we still don't know what this thing is. It is still a single red dot. This one is two red dots connected by a line, which means that two of our probes have a lock on it. But we're more interested in this one. So we'll go down to two astronomical units now and scan again. This is obviously not a training site. This is a real one. It's a combat site. We've finally gotten up above the threshold which reveals which type of site it is, and it is a combat site. So we'll scroll wheel again down to 1 AU, and we'll just click Analyze. So this is an actual real site, in the same way that that Gurustas Refuge combat site was on the Anomalies section. And this is a rogue drone infestation spout, which is actually quite a cruddy, crappy combat site, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to recall my probes with this little button which in the old UI used to be up here and large and now it's down here and tiny so we'll recover all of our probes close the map and we'll warp to the data training site warp drive active and we'll go through the hacking mini game now the probes have gone back in here if we had 16 probes as soon as we launched the first eight the remaining eight would automatically reload in here, so we're just going to tell it to reload them from our cargo. Okay, and the agent's saying, well done, you found your first site. And this is what hack, um, hacking sites actually look like. So, and to open the boxes, you target lock the locked box. And we'll just stop so we don't bounce off it. And we need to use the civilian data analyzer to unlock it. So we'll click this and it begins this little mini game. It's a little bit like Minesweeper. We start here and we're trying to find something called the core. And then we open the core, which unlocks the box. And then we can take stuff from the cargo. What we have here is the coherence or the health of our virus. And on the right is the strength. This is our attack. So we'll click on this, and this number four means that four steps away from this is either the core or something else. So we're still four away, so maybe we want to go up. Three, that's good. Two, that's good. How about here? No. And, and this is a firewall. So this has 20 health and 10 damage. Each time we click on this, we will deal 10 damage to it, and it will deal 10 damage to us. So we're going to need to click it twice to get rid of it, because it has 20 health. And it will leave us on only 5 health. So let's just try and go around this thing, shall we? If we can. 
It doesn't look like we can. We're going to have to break this thing. Hey, so we clicked it once. It lost 10 health because we have 10 attack. We lost 10 health because it has 10 attack. Okay, so we're one away from the core. We're still one away from the core. It could be this one or this one. Two away, so it's this one. That's the core. And the core has 20 health and 10 attack. So I don't think we're going to... Yes, we just got enough in. Even though our health ran out at the same time as the core did, we still killed the core. So now we can open the box and take out the thing. Then go back to the agent and that's it. Warp drive active. Proper bona fide data sites will have three or four of these towers. Some are quite tightly clustered, some are spread out. And you would need a proper tech one data analyzer, not a civilian one to open those. And even in high security space, each can, you can find cans in these sites which contain 30 or 40 million isk worth of goodies. And the only thing we would need to do that is a slightly different data analyzer. We've got the probes, we've got a hacking ship. Tech one data analyzers have far more strength and health than this little thing does. So you can earn a lot of money very quickly as a rookie by doing this kind of thing. Okay, Mr. Agent, we have a proof of discovery for you. And what do you have for us? He wants us to go and find a relic site now. Well, that's okay, we can do that. It's exactly the same as the mission we've just done, but we're trying to find a relic site. And one interesting thing, as you will notice, the scanning panel has remembered everything we had scanned to 100%, and we accidentally found a relic training site, so um, we're going to do it. I'm going to right click and ignore the drone infestation spout. And the agent saying, yes, hello. And this is pretty much what relic sites look like. Maybe not quite this cool, but similar. Again, instead of a nice data tower, these have all this broken up ancient technology, so we'll just get within range. I don't think we need that data training site, so we'll ignore that. And we'll just stop the ship, because I reckon we're close enough. And same mini game. Right, four, three, two, one. It wasn't the core, it was a nasty, so we'll try and go around it. Nope, it doesn't want to play today. There's the core, and we should be able to open it. A little bit too far away, you need to be within two and a half thousand meters to open a, a container. Got it. Mission complete, very easy. So that's mission three and four done in a matter of minutes. Mission two shouldn't really exist. Mission one also takes a couple of minutes. Not the most difficult of mission arcs. Once you get your head around how to use the scanning probes, the world is your oyster. That's the most difficult bit. And obviously that hacking minigame can get quite involved as well. One tip for me is to click around the edges and only open white dot nodes if you have no other path around them. That usually works well enough for anything you find in high security space. Anyway, let's speak to the agent, complete the mission and get the last one. And surprise, surprise, he wants us to find a gas site and we're being rewarded with a Bantam, which is a ship that specialises in repairing the shields of friendly players. So, okay. And we are being given a gas pass key. Because the gate, this site has a gate to block access to it, and you can only get through that gate with this key. And crucially, this key is not consumed. And, after I've claimed all my air rewards, and gone back to the careers, in the Explorer career, gas sites. Enter a gas site. So as soon as we enter that site, we will be rewarded with 25,000 disc and 10 career points. Now, the funny thing about this site is, is that when you land on the in gate, which is the gate which is locked, that counts as you warping into the site. And when you take the gate, it also counts as you 
warping to a gas site. So you'll get credited with finding two gas sites. And another funny thing about this gas site thing is that um, the key in your cargo is not consumed. And because we know that these gas sites constantly respawn in this system, and we get credited for finding two sites every time we walk to one of these sites, um, we can cheese this. We can just keep scanning for gas sites. We know how easy training sites are to find. And once we've entered eight of them, we'll have 16 credits and we'll have all this stuff. So, you know what? Just because this is the final mission, I think we are going to cheese this. We've only been going for like half an hour, so why not? Let's have some fun. Gives us a good excuse to get really good at scanning as well. Now, the player has been naughty. That's why he is orange with a flashy red skull. That's why you don't hang around outside busy stations. And because this is the only station in this system, as you can see, it's the only station on the overview. It's going to be busy because it's the only one there is. So let's just go back to the planet where we were, nice and peaceful. And then we'll scan. See that Gurista Refuge is no longer appearing as an anomaly because someone else has run it. So all these sites are public and competitive and people will run them pretty damn fast. Okay, so what we need is gas sites. Apparently we were pretty close to finding one. It's this thing here. So we'll just center our probes, make sure it's within the middle of our overlapping blue spheres, which it is. We might get this on a single scan at 4 AU. That would be nice. Not quite. Relic site, wormhole, don't want these, so highlight them both and ignore them. Okay, apparently that was a gas site. I was looking at the wrong site. My bad. Right, we'll go back up to eight. It's not quite got all of it in the center, but it's going to be good enough. These training sites are not difficult to find. There's a data site. We don't want that, so we'll ignore that. There's a relic site. We don't want that, so we'll ignore that. It's good to cut down anything that you don't want, otherwise you can get overwhelmed, especially in places like this with constantly respawning sites. You don't want to get overwhelmed with results. You want to clear your map as you go. We should probably get this on the next scan. We got them both. Right, let's go to the first one. And I'm going to come over here and scan this thing because there should be a, there should be three of these gas training sites in this system. I've got to ATU. We'll just scan this. Whilst we warp. It's another relic site. We don't want that, so we'll ignore that and we'll scan this site. And we are right in front of an acceleration gate. If we check the air career program, look, we've been credited with entering a gas site because we're at the gate. So let's just select the gate and collect jump. There's the next gas site we need. So what is this thing here? The agent says, don't forget to pick up the proof of discovery. Yes, thank you, I know. I'm just going to close the map just now. Okay, training container. This is what we need. There's nothing to hack in here because gas sites just spawn clouds, which you can mine with a gas cloud miner. Proof of discovery. There we are. Check the air program. Yes, we have indeed been credited with entering two gas sites. Do we still have the key on board? Oh, look, we do. So, um... Let's just go to the next site. Warp drive and this new site, which has only just spawned, I reckon, is the new gas training site to replace the one that we just despawned by completing. So it's not going to take long to scan and visit eight of these sites and jump through the gates. Is it a little bit cheesy? Yes. Do we care? No. Should the developers fix it? Arguably, yes. All they had to do is to make this key consumable, so the first time you enter the gate, it's gone. 
How many have we done now? 11 out of 15. Oh look, we've got a, a, a care bundle because we've scanned 10 cosmic signatures to 100%. Apparently we're doing other air things without even knowing we're doing them. So what have we been credited with? Scanning. Scan 10 cosmic signatures. Scan 25 cosmic signatures. Scan 50. Well, you know what? We might as well just stay here and keep doing this for now. And we'll just cheese both of these air career program things because why not? Again, we got it instantly at 4 AU. 8 AU, wow, not even 4. And these really are a little bit too easy to find. When it's this easy to find, it doesn't really teach you anything. If they were just a little bit more difficult to find and you had to go down to like 2 AU, you know, make new players at least work for it. Okay, so we've just done 25 sites. <laughs> We're now on 26, and we were looking at shut up agent gas sites. Okay, we've done the 15 gas sites. Jolly good. Hacking. Hmm, interesting. If we hack 25 containers, so we could look for relic and data sites as well. And that's quite good fun, isn't it? And then just hack all them and cheese this as well. But you know what, this is just a throwaway character, so I can't be bothered. I've got better things to do with my time. Let's just dock. We have cheesed enough of this. Claim all our ill-gotten goods. <laughs> We've done like a quarter of the entire exploration career already. Wow, amazing. Combat sites. Enter a combat site. Apparently we've entered four combat sites. Don't remember entering four combat sites, but apparently we have. Navigation is just w taking stargates. I mean, that's not going to take very long to do. <clears throat> Let's complete the mission. That's it. That's the exploration agent. Done and dusted. And what do we get as a reward? Another care box. Okay, we have a lot of things to redeem. So let's redeem them all. Open my container, which gives us a skill book. A random skill book. And another expert system, so we'll redeem that. Yes, please. Ah, okay, you can only have three expert systems, apparently. This is the frigate skill book for a different race, for the Amar race. So as we see, if you click required for, level one will let us fly all these frigates of the Amar race. Level two will let us do this. Level three opens these. Now, these are not of the Amar race. This crewer, as we see, requires a Mimitar frigate bonus and a Mar frigate bonus. This, this is a pirate ship and pirates need two different races skills, which is a good reason for having different um, races of skill. Here we are. So we are Kaldari, as we know from character creation. So if we were to train this Amar frigate to level three, we could have the skills to fly a succubus, which seems to be a ship that fires laser turrets and moves very very fast. Well, might as well inject a skill. Okay, and what we have here is a rig. Now we've talked about implants in the past which are permanent additions to your brain which are destroyed when removed. Rigs are pretty much the same but for ships. That's what these slots are here. And this calibration is again a restraint on how many rigs you can fit. So if we right click and show info on this and click the fitting tab, this will consume 200 calibration. So even though we have three rig slots, we can only fit two of this and then nothing of anything else. What does this one do? It increases the ship's scan probe strength, which makes scanning easier. So this is the perfect ship to put this on. And it says, do you want to do this? It's destroyed when you remove it. So yes, because it's a scanning ship. Thank you very much. And what we have here is a scanning upgrade. This one also improves the scan strength when scanning with scan probes. So that's very nice. We don't quite have the skills for it, but we can fit it. We just can't bring it online because we don't have the skill 
which is astromestic range finding level 2 and that'll take just under 11 hours to do so we won't be doing that today but after we do that this thing will be able to find all kinds of stuff and this is a survey scanner this scans asteroids all asteroids nearby within 15 kilometers and it will tell you exactly how many units and volume is in each and every one of these asteroids it's good if you only want to do dense feldspar or concentrated feldspar or one of the other increased variants so you know exactly how much you're going to get and how much cargo space you're going to need and how long it's going to take you to get it or even exactly when to turn off your mining lasers to maximize your yield this isn't really a problem when you're using things like mining laser mark one which has a 60 second cycle by the time you've done the mathematics on when to turn it off the cycle's probably ended anyway it becomes more of an issue when you're using the large strip miners on big huge mining ships which have mining cycles that last multiple minutes so you can save a couple of minutes by doing some quick mathematics and figuring out that well there's only about 25 seconds of cycle time worth of ore left in that rock so you just turn off your mining cycle after that length of time the rock despawns and you've saved yourself for a couple of minutes excellent right so that is the end of this video it's very short but scanning isn't particularly difficult once you get your head around how to move the probes and what you're actually trying to do it's very very simple and you can earn an awful lot of money doing it even as a rookie player in a brand new ship as i said the only things we need to do on this ship especially now it's got these upgrades on it is to replace these civilian things with proper tech one variants because the civilian ones will not open proper cans it will just say no you haven't got the right equipment what will we do in the next video i think we'll do the other industrialist which is called entrepreneur very very easy it should be a single video even though it's 10 missions long so i hope to see you for that and i hope you look after yourself until then talk to you later